Hello, welcome to my channel. Um, my name is Minette and I have some time off again. So I want to make another one of these for myself with smaller rectangles and cropped. So I'm going to wear this and show you where I want it to end. So this is what it looks like. Nice. Nice and beautiful if you remember, nice and comfy. But I want it cropped, so this is where my waist is. So I think I'm going to make it stop right here and add the cuff for where my waist is. And yeah, so two rectangles. And then this is very wide, so I'm going to end it also here. So it'll be cropped and a little bit, you know, more adjusted to my body for the sleeve. I think I'm gonna make it one rectangle short because that's where my wrist is. And also I want to make it less wide, so I think two rectangles. So that's gonna be nice and not too wide because right now it's really really wide. So yeah, two rectangles wide. I'm gonna eliminate that and one rectangle here. Yeah. Yeah. And I said I wanted to maybe make a hood, but I don't think I want a hood. We'll see how I feel. So that's what I am thinking of doing for myself. But if you want, you can also measure. And I'll show you all the steps along the way that I did as well, like the last time. So you can make one too. Also, to be extra safe, I'm going to measure my rectangle to here, which should be 14 plus 14, should be 28. Same with this, it should be 10 plus 10, 20. But just to be safe, I'm gonna re measure. See you in a bit. So I measured the width of the two rectangles and it's 20 centimeters, so perfect because I did crochet them 10 centimeters each and then the length uh, is 30 so that's 15 centimeters each it did stretch a little bit because of the weight which is totally fine and so I can now decide how many rectangles I want inside I want 3 times 3 so 30 divided by 3 is 10 and 20 I'm gonna go 21 21 divided by 3 is 7 so I'll have three times three nine rectangles. So that's nice. If I wanted four, I would divide it by four, but I think it might be a little bit too small. So I think 10 times seven will be my measurement. And I'll use those measurements also for the sleeve. The sleeve length is 30 that I want, 30 centimeters. So the, there again, it's going to be perfect. I'm going to decide what colors I want and I'll show them to you. I'm so happy, so excited about this one because it's for me. Here is a rough sketch of what I want to do. For this crocheted cardigan, you're going to need yarn. I'm going to be using six colors, but you can use more or less if you want. I'm hoping only one ball is needed for this one because it's shorter and less wide and sleeves are shorter. So hopefully only one ball. You will also need crochet hooks. I don't know which size yet. I'm aiming between three and four millimeter because I'm also maybe going to be doing half double crochet instead of double crochet. And you'll need tape measure to measure your rectangles. Thread snips or scissors, a darning needle, make sure the eye is big enough for the yarn to go through, and some buttons. I think around five buttons, 18 millimeters should be good. And that's all that I think that I need. So I'm going to show you which colors that I chose. I'm really excited about my yarn. Um, I'll show them to you one by one and then I'll show you a picture at the end of all of them together. So my first one is Caron, 
and it's called Robin's Egg. I'll show you this. If ever you want the same color, you can probably find it. Another one from Karen. It's called Grape. Now for loops and thread yarn, I have Teenage Dream. And loops and thread, Peony. Loops and thread, Wisteria. It's one of the colors I used last time for like examples. And Toria. And then this one is called Smoky Rose. Yeah, Smoky Rose. Oh I'll show you a picture right now. I want to use the same method of crochet I did last time. So instead of chaining, we're going to do the little cord. And then we'll work from there and I'll show you how to do that. And I want the wavy effect still. So that's crocheting in the back loop only and I'll show you how to do that as well. And the houndstooth, I loved it so much. Even though it didn't really look like a houndstooth, it was more like a basket weave because of the wavy effect, but it was so cute. I have to do it again. So I'll be doing that too and I'll show you how. And I'm really excited to get this going. So I'll experiment on the length and width and everything which crochet hook I decide and if I want half double crochet or double crochet and I'll get back to you. This is my right and this is my left front. It's 30 centimeters long so that'll be 30 divided by 1, 2, 3. That's 10. So 10, 10, 10. And for my width is 21. So 21 divided by 1, 2, 3 is seven so seven 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 so that's my measure i decided on a 3.5 millimeter hook to give me a length of 10 centimeters i need 12 rows here and the width seven centimeters is 13 stitches you calculate how many rectangles i need i just need to count so for the front side right one two three one two three that's nine and another 9 for the left, so that equals 18. And this is the back, which also needs 18, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, right? 6 times 3 is 18. So 18 plus 18 is 36. For the sleeve is 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. 3 times 4 is 12. But you need 2, so 12 times 2 is 24. And if you add all of them together, that answer is 60. And I have 6 colors. So 60 divided by 6 will give me the amount of rectangles I need for each color. So that's a beautiful 10. 10 rectangles of each color. Get it started! with a slip knot and we're going to chain three one two three and then we're not going to do a base chain we're going to do a cord so i'm going to yarn over go through the first chain right here yarn over and go through i'm going to yarn over again and only go through the first one this will be our dropped chain and this will be the base for our crochet project then we're gonna yarn over and go through all three so this is one half double crochet and we're gonna count this one also as a half double crochet so again yarn over this is the first one this is the second so this is where we want to go yarn over go through Yarn over, we're gonna drop this one for the next. And yarn over, go through all of them. So that's one, two, and three. The chains we did at the beginning. And again, I'll show you. 
yarn over, go through the dropped chain, yarn over, go through, and we're gonna drop the first one, yarn over, drop, yeah, yarn over, go through all, and we're gonna do this ten times, plus this first one is eleven. I'll meet you at the end. We're done our 11. Let's count together. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the chain here is our 11. So what we're going to do now is chain 2. And turn here. Yeah. So we're going to yarn over. And since we want to do the knitted effect, we're only going to go through the back loop. Yarn over and go through. Yarn over. Go through all the loops. I'll show you again. Yarn over. Go through the back loop only. Yarn over to pull through. Yarn over. Go through all. See? Started to do already the knitted effect. Let's do a half double crochet all across. I'll meet you at the end. This is what it looks like. We need 10 rows, so I'll see you at 10 rows. Here is my rectangle. You can do 10 of these in each color, but if you want to go faster, you can make strips. So we can like change the color here to make like three strips, and then you just have to sew here instead of sewing everything together. So what you can do is at the last stitch, you're going to yarn over, go through, yarn over and pull through. And instead of finishing your half double crochet in the same color, you're going to switch colors. So take your next color and go through. And then you chain two, go flip, and then you continue your half double crochet. And I'll meet you at the end. This is our rectangle. It looks really good. I definitely recommend switching the colors and doing one, two, three rectangles and then another column with three and another with three. So then you only need to stitch them together here because stitching them individually takes forever. It's a long time. So if you do it like this where you switch the color, one, and the second time later to have three rectangles it'll go way faster so i recommend this the only reason why i won't be doing this is because i found a new method to attach rectangles together by doing a slip stitch and a zigzag and it looks really cute so i want to try that out on my cardigan i'll show you how to do that one too Time for me to start crocheting my real rectangles. To do the double colored one, we're going to slip knot and then do chains until we get seven centimeters. So I needed 13 to get seven centimeters. So I'll meet you there. I have my 13 chains. We're going to chain an extra two. Then we're going to yarn over and half double crochet in one, two, and the third one from the hook. And the second one here. And the third one here. But instead of finishing off like this, we're going to switch colors. I'm going to be switching to pink right here, yarn over, half double crochet in the next one. Let's catch the thread here is important. It will disappear into our work. And then again, we're going to switch back to purple. Yarn over and do two more. And one. Catch all the yarn. 
two. And on the third, we'll be switching again back to pink. So this is my third one. When I'm switching the colors, I like to keep pink on one side and purple on the other side so they don't get tangled. I'm going to switch color. So it's pink. through all the next one is gonna be pink pink don't forget to catch all the yarn and then I'm not gonna go through like this I have to switch back to purple purple on one side go through and then you do another three purple so it'll be purple 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 pink purple 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 pink all the way across and I'll meet you at the end I'm about to finish my last one, but I have to figure out what my next row is going to be. And we're going to do the opposite. So wherever it's purple, 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 here we're going to be pink. This is pink, so it's going to be purple. Purple, 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 it'll be pink, pink, pink. And then purple, pink, 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 purple, pink. So I'm going to be working a pink here, so I'm going to switch to pink. And then chain two and turn turn then you're gonna yarn over and we're gonna go in the back loop only to create that knitted effect but before we do that we need to grab our purple yarn okay et voila and then switching back to purple for the next bit so this is what it looks like and we know our next row these are three pink so the next row is going to be three purple pink purple pink purple pink purple so i'm going to switch this to purple and chain two and turn And you can barely tell that we crocheted with the yarn inside because it's hiding. Hiding like right here. You can't tell. So you continue like this pattern until you have enough rows. So me, I needed 10 rows. So next is purple, 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 pink, purple, 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 pink, purple. It's a hard word to say three times. And then it continue, yeah, and it looks like this. This is what the rectangle will look like when you're done. Our rectangles are done, so I have 10 of each. And now I'm going to weave the loose yarn back into my work so it's all nice and neat. You're gonna want to make your rectangle nice and neat. So you're going to weave this back in, so thread your darning needle and then you're gonna find a nice spot like here and you're going to go in and back you can do it third time if you want and then you just cut the yarn like this and voila! I recommend making a diagram because it'll be a lot easier for you to know which rectangles to sew together. For example, I'll be sewing A and B together with C, and then I'll be sewing D, E, and F, and then B, C, and D to make the right front. But also if you're using this method where you're crocheting and switching the color, for example, here we have C is purple, and then we're switching to E, which is green, and then you're like, oh, which one's after? You'll know, oh, B. B is blue. So after green, I'll be switching to blue. Making this diagram will make your life a lot easier, and your work will be fluid, and you won't be like taking out your hair just to figure out like, oh no, which color is supposed to be? I can't remember. Well, if you have the diagram, it'll be a lot easier. Rectangles 
are clean, no more hanging yarns. Now I'm gonna place them like the diagram that I drew before I start stitching them together. These are my beautiful rectangles, nice and laid out. This is the front right here. This is the back and this is the other front. This is a sleeve and another sleeve. So now I need to sew them together and I want to make sure that none of the colors that are going to be sewn together like here are, not, are the same, right? Because we want it to be nice and uniform and like laid out. So this is going to be sewed to here and these colors don't match. And these colors don't match right here. And then the center front and other center front, also the colors don't match, so it's perfect. I'm ready to sew. You also want your rectangles to line up. So here, these ones line up, they look nice. This one doesn't line up, so you have to find the perfect match. Et voila! Now the trick is to like remember where you're you start your rectangle, so I started here, so I know it's on the bottom left, bottom left, bottom left, and then they'll all match up. Got these beautiful rectangles sewn together with a zigzag slip stitch. So cute. I'll show you how to do it. These are my rectangles for the sleeve, and I already laid them out the way I want them to be sewn. And we're going to slip stitch in a zigzag here and then here and once that's done we're gonna sew here and here and then here and I'll show you how to do that. First thing we're going to do is make a slip knot and then we're gonna put it aside for a second. We're gonna use our hook and find the corner and put our hook in the corner and then take the slip knot and bring it through. Then we're going to find the corner of the rectangle that's above the first one. Put our hook through here from top to bottom. Find our thread, not this one. We want this one. Grab it and yarn over and do a slip stitch. We went from bottom, top, now back to bottom, the second stitch here. We're going to grab our yarn and then slip stitch. Voila! And now that we were here, we're going to go back up to the next hole right here. Grab our yarn and slip stitch. Boom. Then back down to the next stitch right here. Grab the yarn. Always top to bottom and the next. Like this. And you go like this all the way to the corner and I'll meet you there did one on the bottom, my last one is in the corner, top, and sometimes it can be a little tight. Once you're done this, you grab the one that's right after the bottom one. Once you've done this, you grab the next two, which is purple for the bottom, and Robin's egg for the top, and I do the same. We've done this stitch and this stitch. We're ready to go this way. It's important to have our thread, our yarn, underneath our work. Because of this, it'll be helpful. We're going to start with a slip knot. Here, put it aside just like before. Go in the corner, grab the slip stitch, find the other corner and grab the yarn but we don't want this one it might be helpful for you if you put it on the other side grab the yarn and do a slip stitch and then go from the bottom top back to the bottom grab the yarn and slip stitch 
that to the top. Always from top to bottom. And then I'll meet you at the corner here. So we're at the corner here. So what we're going to do is go in the corner that we already went through. So right here. Don't know if you can tell in the video, but you see the pink here. So that's where we're going to go. Boop. Right in the corner. Grab the yarn. Slip stitch as normal. Same with the other side. Find our corner that we went through. Go through and then go to the next one here, our corner, stitch, next corner, slip stitch and you do the same all the way. Here is our section all stitched together. We're going to make it into a sleeve so we're going to flip it and fold it. And we're going to sew along here the same way. Two sleeves are done. I also marked the center front of the sleeve that will be matched to the shoulder seam. My rectangles are done. This is the front, the back, the front, two sleeves. I needed two balls of the Teenage Dream because it's smaller than the other balls. It's actually two thirds of the other balls, so I needed two because I also did like the stitching with it. So here it is. And then the next step is going to be to sew the shoulders together. Are my rectangles, and we'll be sewing the shoulder here, leaving these four open, and this right here. Here is my front and my back sewn together right here at the shoulder and now we're gonna sew in the sleeves and for that we're gonna put this right side inside so here's the main body with right sides on the inside and here is one of my sleeves and I marked the center here the top which will be sewn to the top of the shoulder here. So we're gonna put this on the inside. Right here, matching the seams. Create a sandwich. Create a nice little sandwich like this. And we're gonna pin it, just so it doesn't stretch. Like here, here, here. The seam here is gonna match the seam here. And we're going to pin this together so it doesn't move and here I pinned it nicely everything matches and I'm gonna do the same on the other side and we're gonna sew around here regular stitch and then down here is the other side pinned and ready to go and the reason why we're gonna stitch it regular stitch around is because especially here in the armhole we don't want extra bulky layer so we're just gonna sew like a regular stitch i'm ready to sew i'm going to use four lengths just to be safe i'm gonna thread the needle is this still threading the needle if it's yarn I don't know. And then we're going to go through the corner here. And I'm going to stitch in every single here stitch, sometimes maybe even twice, and try to sew as much as possible so it's nice and secure and tight. I leave a little tail so I weave it in after. And then we're going to go around here and then back to so here. Just 
gonna go through each stitch like this wherever you feel is best there's no rule i think to wear exactly because they don't match this is the side and this is the top but i like to go through each stitch here sometimes you might feel like oh this stitch is so big you might go in here and then in here after and that's what i'm gonna do actually And you're gonna do this all around. When I get here, I'm probably going to flip it. Like this. And continue sewing like this from right to left. Because I'm right handed, it's a lot easier to the end. This is the cardigan, nice and cute. But since I eliminated a rectangle here on each side, my sleeve is now shorter, so I'm going to add an extra four rectangles around and the colors will be E, F, A, B and two of each. So here is my drawing, so E, F, A, B times two and I'm going to sew that to the sleeve. Meet you there! These are my cuffs and my hem. They are seven stitches wide. These are 20 rows and they're big enough for my wrists because I have small wrists. So this is my sleeve, the bottom of my sleeve. And I don't know if you can tell, but I weaved a yarn all around here about one centimeter from the, from the side all around. And you can see the threads here just so we can pull and gather it. And then we're going to put the right side on the inside. So let's do that. Do a little switcheroo. Right here. We're gonna put the cuff inside. And then you just adjust the gathers and then you're gonna sew all around. But I need to make it a little bit tighter. A little bit tighter and then when you're satisfied you can knot it adjust the gathers where you want it so it's nice and even and then you sew all around you can pin it if it's easier also so it doesn't like move and that's how you do the cuff I finished my cuffs so to the sleeve and the other one nice and cute now I'm gonna sew the ribbing for the hem onto the bottom and this is my bottom hem and i want it to be the same length as the bottom of my cardigan this is the bottom of my cardigan and i want this hem right here to be as long and flat so i'm gonna measure this and then i'm gonna continue crocheting until I have the same length and then I'm going to sew it together on the bottom. To sew the hem, what I found is just laying it flat on the bad side, the wrong side, and just sewing it together. I sewed the hem ripping onto the bottom of the cardigan. It's nice and beautiful. It's perfect. So the next step will be to make the closure and then the color and I'll show you how to do that. For my closure and color, I think I'm going to do just one long strip that goes around. I can either measure and then do the strip or make chains until I have the right length. So either or, or is good. I'll show you how I did mine. Here is my finished cardigan. I sewed the closure and collar in one big strip around with the zigzag slip stitch. And I added one, two, three, four, five buttons. Cute. 
Can't wait to try it on. This is what the cardigan looks like on a mannequin. So cute. Look at this. Beautiful. So this is my cardigan. Sleeves are perfect length for me. It's nice and cropped. Yeah, the way I like it. Not too tight around the collar. It's so cute, guys. Oh my god. I love it. It's so adorable. So cute. If I would change anything, hmm, not really. It's just so perfect. <laughs> yeah. I hope you liked the, the tutorial documentary of this cardigan. Um, I love it. It's so freaking cute. Ah. Um, thanks for watching. Peace. We'll see how I feel. I gotta visit her. Oh, hello. Say hello. Say hello. For this project of the cardigan, you're going to need a measuring tape. Pat is eating it. Eh. No. So for this crochet project, you'll be needing yarn. I'll be using Say hi, Dad. <laughs>